Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into a captivating corner of mathematics, a simple problem that is, as of yet, unsolved. We're going to talk about the Collatz conjecture. Now don't let the name scare you off. This is a problem that you can explain to a child, yet baffles the greatest mathematical minds. And the best part is, we will write Python code to create Collatz sequence. The Collatz conjecture, named after the German mathematician Lothar Collatz, presents a sequence that begins with any positive integer number. Here's how it works. If the number is even, we divide it by 2. If the number is odd, we multiply it by 3 and then add 1. We repeat this process with the resulting number and so on, creating a sequence of numbers. The Collatz conjecture suggests that no matter what positive integer you start with, if you follow these rules, you will eventually reach the number 1. Here is an example. Let's say that the starting number is 12. It is an even number. Hence, we divide it by 2 and we get 6, which is also an even number. So we divide 6 by 2. We get 3, which is an odd number. Therefore, we multiply 3 by 3 and add 1. We have 10. 10 is an even number. So we divide it by 2 and we obtain 5, which is an odd number. We multiply 5 by 3 and add 1, ending up with 16. 16 is an even number, so we divide 16 by 2. We get 8, which is an even number. So we divide 8 by 2 and we have 4 now. 4 is an even number, so we divide it by 2. The result is 2, which is an even number that needs to be divided by 2. We end up with 1. Try with any other starting number and follow the Collatz formula. You will always end up with 1. Simple to understand, right? But the truth is, despite much computational evidence supporting the conjecture, it still has no definitive mathematical proof, making it one of the most famous unsolved problems in mathematics. In this video, we will write Python code to generate a Collat sequence, and we'll do it in two ways, iteratively and recursively. So whether you're a fan of loops or recursive calls, we've got you covered. Let's get started. Here I am writing the iterative solution first. This function accepts an integer input, num and begins by initializing a list sequence with the variable content in num as the only element. This list will hold the sequence of numbers generated by the Collatz conjecture. The function then enters a loop, which continues until num equals 1. Within this loop, the function checks if num is even, that is num mod 2 is equal to 0. If it is, num is divided by 2, and if it isn't, num is multiplied by 3 and 1 is added. The new value of num is then appended to the sequence list. This loop will continue until num becomes 1, after which the function will return the sequence list. Now I am calling the function, Collatz, with an input value of 12. I am printing whatever is returned from the function. That is, the returned list from the function Collatz should be printed. Running the code, we find that the Collatz sequence numbers for 12 are printed. This iterative solution is the easy way to retrieve the Collatz sequence. As computer scientists, we do not feel satisfied with an easy way. So we need to solve the same problem the hard way too. As the hard way, I am going to write another function named Collatz R. The Collatz R function will also generate the Collatz sequence of the given number num, but it will do so recursively instead of iteratively. If num is 1, the function returns a list containing only num. This is the base case. If the base case is not reached, the function checks if num is even. If it is, the function calls itself with num by 2 as the new input. And if it isn't, it calls itself with 3 times num plus 1 as the new input. The tail variable will be a list containing the sequence of numbers generated by the recursive call. This sequence is then combined with the current value of num to form the entire sequence for the input variable num, after which the function will return the sequence list. I had a typo here. I wrote mum instead of num, so I am correcting it. We have the recursive function. I will now call the recursive function right after the iterative one. Let us see if it is working. Excellent! Both the functions, the easy one and the tough one, have the same Collatz sequence outcome for the number 12. Ideally, if you can write an iterative function to solve a problem, you do not use a recursive function because iterative functions are faster than their corresponding recursive versions. 
There are some problems where iterative solutions are significantly more difficult to code than recursive ones. Only in those situations, we use recursive codes. However, designing recursive solutions to easy-to-understand problems like the one we explored today is a good practice for educational purposes. If you liked the video, then please press the like button. If you did not like it, well, what can I say? Then subscribe to this channel so that you can like a future video. This is a video made by Dr. Shahrir Hossein. It is narrated by Dr. Hossein's AI clone, which sounds better than Dr. Hossein's original voice.